Hello there, welcome to the channel. This is Nerd World, where I discuss anything and everything nerdy that interests me and hopefully interests you too. Today I'm branching out into a very beloved franchise of mine that I've not really touched on much on this channel before, which I don't really know why, but it's mostly because I've been focused on other series such as Star Trek and Andromeda and Stargate. But I absolutely love Babylon 5. As a space opera, as a TV series, it was so well written, so well crafted, and had some of the best developed side characters of any show ever. And as I've stated before, I like things that are contextually very well grounded and are very well written and they're very and there's a big universe behind it. Things like Star Wars, for example, that have a lot of rich lore and story beyond what you initially see. I like that kind of storytelling sort of grandiose and epic and that definitely sums up Babylon 5. To be fair some of the CGI is not held up so well but I couldn't care less. The writing and acting is so good and has such fantastic characters. Specifically though today I'm going to be covering the EAS Warlock or more specifically the Warlock class destroyer of the Earth Alliance built after the Shadow War using technology harvested from both human and alien sources which we'll get to later in the video where all that tech was coming from. Before we get started please like, share, subscribe and comment down below because that all helps this channel grow and I'm still trying to grow this channel obviously. With that out of the way, let's just get started. Right, to put the Warlock class in a little bit of context as to why it's possibly the most powerful ship ever built by humans to date, you got to look at the few vessels that were built before it. Humanity in the Babylon 5 universe is one of the younger races, and even amongst the younger races they're still relatively young. Although they've been a spacefaring civilization for centuries, they've only had jump technology for about a hundred years. They first became notable during the Dilgar War, where humans used vessels that had no gravity, but had big powerful guns and they knew how to use them very well. These dreadnought type vessels were obsolete, massively obsolete by the time the Warlock class came into commission. The Warlock class was a direct successor to the Omega class which had been the most powerful and ubiquitous vessel in the Earth Alliance Navy for many years and would continue to serve alongside the Warlock class. The Warlock class though was leaps and bounds ahead of it, not only incorporating human technology but also alien technology. This included advanced armor that was capable of absorbing a certain amount of energy f weapons fire rather than simply having to weather damage like previous vessels did. It could actually diffuse energy across its hull. The vessel was also extremely heavily armed, with many of the same plasma, pulse cannons and ra systems of other vessels, including additionally three large heavy railguns, but the vessel also incorporated two weapon systems which are part of the Aegis Orbital Defense System which was used around Earth and other key worlds. These so-called God Cannons were amongst the most powerful energy-based weapons built by humans and could usually make wor short work of some of the most advanced alien vessels around, but they required a huge power plant to operate and as a result were not normally installed aboard a starship. The Warlock class was the first vessel to carry them as standard, not just have them as an afterthought or something strapped on because you needed it for a specialist mission. This had two of them mounted in the front of the ship which were seen to slice through advanced Centauri warships with ease and put the vessel on an equal footing to many Minbari warships which during the Earth Minbari war would have been very useful. The vessels incorporate a certain amount of Minbari technology. As stated earlier in the video, these vessels were built with not just human tech but incorporated certain other alien technologies. Now obviously many races sell and steal technology from one another, including races borrowing it from humans and vice versa. This happens a lot, so a lot of the technology to begin with is kind of hybrid. But most of the base technology of a domestic species is usually their own. But before the Warlock class came into a being, humans could only generate gravity aboard their ships and outposts in space by using rotational centrifugal force. Basically a section of the ship or station, or in the case of the Babylon 5 station, the entire station pretty much would rotate, creating gravity on the inner skin of the space station, or the Omega class which had a large rotational section in the middle. This would generate gravity but only in that section, the rest of the crew would float around and have to be strapped in place. The Warlock class though had gravity plating, now this gravity plating was a 
a byproduct of certain other technologies that broadly allowed the Warlock class to be leaps and bounds above ships that came before it. Particularly, although it still had direct thrust engines, it was supplemented by gravitic propulsion systems. These gravitic engines had a byproduct, second, well, a secondary function of generating gravity aboard the ship as well, which also was keyed into the ship's power systems, meaning it generated huge amounts of power while generating gravity and thrust at the same time, a very advanced system that humans got from the Minbari with Earth's entry into the Earth, uh, into the Interstellar Alliance. It was basically like a, um, a bribe to join. And the Warlock class was the first vessel to truly benefit from this, although other vessels would eventually have it installed as well. In addition to this, the vessel also carried numerous Star Fury fighters. It could carry multiple classes, didn't just have to carry the traditional space superiority fighters. It could carry atmospheric entry. It also carried shuttles and other such auxiliary craft. It was, as I said, the most powerful vessel, but the vessel's most unique and maybe most mysterious feature was some of the vessel's technology was of shadow origin. If you've never watched Babylon 5, the shadows were the big bad enemy for years and humans were allied to them. Unlike in many other sci-fi stories, the humans are seen directly as the saviors and always coming to the rescue. In the early stories, yes, they were a little bit, but later on, <clears throat> Earth cut itself off. Babylon 5 declared independence, and although, yes, many of the main protagonists of the show were humans, but they were humans from B5 or other rebel elements, the greater majority of the human race was completely ignorant of the Shadows and the people running it. The President, the staff, and all the gov higher government agencies, such as the psy were all complicit with the Shadows, working with them. And they were studying Shadow technology. They had captured a Shadow vessel that they had studied components of, and at some point they'd managed to find other bits and pieces of Shadow tech, probably gifted to them by the Shadows. Now, incorporated somewhere deep in the belly of this ship was a Shadow piece of technology, or more accurately, a sh possibly a Shadow-inspired piece of technology. Exactly how it worked and what it did is unknown. It's also not entirely clear if it was genuinely a domestically produced piece of technology, or was just something they ripped out of another Shadow vessel could be either. But nothing was ever unfortunately explored extensively. There was only one known Warlock class ship that whose commanding officer became fully aware that there was definitely a piece of shadow technology or, or again shadow reverse engineered shadow tech in the vessel. Certain components of other components of the ship seemed to operate in a way that was she seen, she recognizes familiar. Other human officers wouldn't sense it. But Captain Ivanova, who was a latent telepath, not to mention her experience with the Shadows, quickly figured out that there was something more to the Warlock than just an Earth Minbari hybrid vessel. There was something else at play behind it. And this Shadow inspired tech was what she was sensing. Now, she couldn't go to her superiors about it because obviously they'd know it was there, but she, it was dormant and she didn't know what it was. Her and a few of her crew scoured the ship, with, whether the crew knew what they were looking for or not, looking for something, but they couldn't find any evidence of it. So she snuck to Babylon 5 on the, under a pretext and spoke with her former CEO, now President of the Instellar Alliance, asking for a favour. Could he either alleviate or substantiate her fears that there was definitely shadow tech at play? with the Warlock and how extensive was it. Sheridan and his people were able to determine, with the help of Lita Alexander, that there was definitely Shadow Tech, or again possibly adapted or reverse engineered Shadow Technology, being used in the Warlock class, but they didn't know what it was for. They theorized that it might be used to possibly remote control the vessel if necessary, basically take control of it from Earth or some other outpost and make it do what you want without the crew being able to control the vessel. It could also simply have been a monitoring device. They were just simply not sure. They knew that Earth had been dabbling with shadow technology for a number of years, adapting and reverse engineering it, in some cases blatantly just using shadow technology as certain people, like such as the Doctor from Babylon 5 had mentioned, after the end of the Soviet era on Earth, Lots of nuclear weapons and other advanced tech fell into the hands of other nations who had no idea how to replicate the technology, but were perfectly happy to use it. 
And the same thing looks like it was happening here. Earth might not have fully understood all of the shadow technology, but it was perfectly happy to use it. And if it could adapt it or reverse engineer it or build something new out of it, great, they would. But sometimes that tech was sometimes a little too close to shadow, and that was what was worrying. But they had a Vorlon vessel still laying dormant within Babylon 5 from the former Vorlon ambassador. They took the vessel and put it into the launch bay aboard the Titans, which was the Warlock-class ship that Captain Ivanova commanded. They interfaced it with the command systems and it was able to directly confirm that there was definitely shadow interference in the systems, but it was dormant. The ship would remain linked to the Titans willingly to suppress the shadow device, preventing it ever from being activated or used by anybody, meaning the, the Titans would always be free of this technology. But other Warlock-class vessels had it in them and there was still no idea what it was. And this is something as a fascinating, I would love to have seen this story explored more. The Warlock class was a fantastic ship, seen to be able to wreak havoc and destruction upon much more advanced vessels and more advanced races, which humans would normally have to overwhelm with numbers. Now it could take them on, and they would have to overwhelm it. And was this shadow device partially responsible for that? Was it generating power? Was it making the crew more aggressive, as shadow technology was somewhat psychically based? Who knows? Would have loved to have found out more. But the Warlock class was a cool, big, monster bruiser of a starship, which was able to be faster, more maneuverable, and more heavily armed than any Earth vessel that had come before it. And we didn't get to see enough of it in Babylon 5. Or in the, its Splinter series Crusade, where you saw a little bit of them, but not much. Well, there we have it, the Warlock class destroyer, one of the best vessels in sci-fi, in my opinion. It looks cool, it looks so human, but at the same time, from the Babylon 5 aesthetic, it does look like there's something else gone into it. You can see in the skin of the vessel, its coloration, its lines and its forms, that it's there's some, there is something more to it. It's hinting that this vessel is not all that it appears to be. It looks like a human ship, it behaves like a human ship, it's crewed by humans, but there's just something more. Now this is going to be the first episode in a series where I'm, I'm going to start looking at a lot more Babylon 5 vessels, because particularly Earth Force ones as I like them, and I'm going to look at a lot of the alien ships as well. I'm going to start with, me, with many of the, how Earth was sort of misusing shadow technology, including on vessels like this. and they misused it far worse with others. The Warlock class was still, after all, predominantly just controlled by its human crew and just seemed to be enhanced with shadow technology, not purely built with it. But we'll move on to that in another video. And all that said, please like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you like this video. And if you have anything you want to contribute to the discussion of this ship, because as I said, this is more of a discussion on my channel usually than just pure lore breakdown, please tell me down below what you think of this ship. Also, please check out my other two channels if you're interested or still still here at the end of the video. Nerd World Films and Nerd World History, they're linked down below. Go check them out, see what they're about. You might like them. If you do, please like and share and subscribe over there as well. And comment that you came from this channel, because I'm curious to know if anyone's, how many people are moving between my channels. And now, bye-bye.